This is a video that I've made for myself. If anyone else gets any benefit from it, then that's an added bonus. Speaking of added bonuses, one of those is available on Nebula, who have kindly sponsored this video along with CuriosityStream. Stick around to the end to find out more about that. As some of you will know, this was a very big year for me and my partner. We bought a house together and then we got married, which, uh, cleared out our finances. Up until this year, we basically bunged whatever savings we had into a savings account, knowing that we might need to use it at any moment. And that kind of precluded any kind of investment strategy. Besides that, neither Pixel Girl or I knew what a savings or investment strategy would even look like. What? I've been a student for eight years. So post-wedding, post-house, I decided that I wanted to learn how to invest properly and plan for the financial future. But that came with a big problem, because as far as I could tell, if I wanted to get any kind of return from an investment, I either had to invest in crypto or in a fund from some big bank that supported fossil fuel extraction or clubbing baby seals or something. Money is, unfortunately, for now, what makes the world go round. The way that we use our money determines how the world works. And at the moment, financial systems are geared towards activities that harm the climate. The amount of money invested this way is responsible for the situation we're in. That means, though, that changing how we use financial systems can be a powerful tool to reshape the world. If you're lucky enough to have some money to invest, then you have a small measure of individual power over which projects succeed and which don't succeed in the wider world. In other words, where you put your money matters. So I had two objectives for finding investments. And to be very clear, these are very modest investments. One building on top of the other. Firstly, not doing any harm. In other words, not picking any investments that actively make the problem of climate change worse, which basically translates into not supporting any projects to do with fossil fuel extraction. And secondly, actually helping fix the problem. In other words, picking investments that are actively trying to help climate solutions, such as renewable energy bringing down carbon emissions. And believe it or not, investments do exist that meet these two criteria, and they can even give you a nice return. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I learned on my journey and point you towards some resources that might help you weaponize your investments to combat the climate crisis. But before going any further, my lawyer advises me to make the following statement. This video is not financial advice. It is based on my own research, and as I am not a financial advisor, I am not authorized to offer financial advice. Always do your own research and seek independent financial advice when required. The value of investments can fall as well as rise. Your capital may be at risk. Okay, so before talking about which investments help the climate crisis, we first need to understand what kinds of investments are available to us. Now, as I already said, at the start of my journey, I was not an expert at this, so I asked one of my friends who was. All right, so let's run through what options we've got when it comes to investing our money. Firstly, we have savings accounts. This is basically a bank account. You put the money in it and you get usually a pretty small rate of interest. The good thing about a savings account is you can take your money out whenever you want. The bad thing about a savings account is that your rate of interest is usually pretty low. Next, we have the whole broad category of stocks and shares. So this is basically when you own a share in a company, like you might buy a share in Apple or something like that. And you can really do this in one of three ways. You could do it by picking individual stocks, for example, by going on a broker's website and buying a stock of Apple or Tesla or whatever. Or alternatively, you can do it via funds. Now, there's really two types of funds that we want to be aware of. There's mutual funds and then there's ETFs, which stand for exchange traded funds. Now, a fund is basically just a collection of stocks and shares. So, for example, a fund might have the top 20 tech companies. That would be a fund that has these 20 individual stocks. A mutual fund is a fund that is actively managed, i.e. there is a fund manager who a physical person who's saying, I reckon we should invest in all these different companies. So it's a real person doing the work. Whereas an ETF is an exchange traded fund, and this is a passive fund. So this might be, for example, the S&P 500, which is just a fund containing all top 500 companies in the US. Now, in terms of pros and cons, the good thing about stocks and shares is that you can generally get higher returns compared to just interest because the market overall goes up over time. But the problem is you could lose some of your money, especially if you're investing in the short term. Like for example, if you'd invested your money in stocks and shares, just before the 2008 financial crisis, you'd have been very, very negative for about two years before the market took time to recover. Broadly, if you're considering between mutual funds and ETFs, most people would say go for an ETF because they tend to have lower fees. As soon as you have an active fund manager in a mutual fund, suddenly the fees go through the roof and it becomes almost not worth doing. Category number three that we might wanna talk about is robo investing. This is basically where you put your money into some kind of app where the app figures out what kind of funds, what kind of stocks, what, what kind of stuff you wanna invest in. And this can be good if 
you want a very easy, very user-friendly way to invest your money. But the downside is that usually they have slightly higher fees than if you just plain old invested into an ETF, a passively managed exchange traded fund. And then finally, category number four broadly is crypto. Very speculative. I would consider crypto almost like gambling rather than investing. So this is our menu. What we now need to do is identify the investments within each of these categories that meet our two objectives. For starters, let's say that you want to play things extremely safe and put your savings into a savings account. Fortunately, at least in the UK, the law says that retail banking and investment banking must be kept separate. So any money that you put into a high street ISA, for example, can't be used to finance nefarious schemes or any positive schemes for that matter. However, by choosing a bank to open an account with, you are endorsing both the retail and the investment sides of their business. And many banks are still supporting fossil fuel extraction in a big way. Investment charity Share Action estimates that just since 2021, 24 large banks have supplied $33 billion in funding for new oil and gas projects. More than half of that total amount came from just four banks, Barclays, HSBC, BNP Paribas and Deutsche Bank, all of which are members of the Net Zero Banking Alliance. Hmm. And it's not just banks. Let's say you wanted to invest in a private pension. Well, Friends of the Earth investigated the six largest private pensions in the UK and found that on average, 4.3 pence of every pound invested in these pensions was invested in fossil fuels. That means the average person with one of these pensions has invested £1,916 each in actively making the problem of climate change worse. And I'm going to go on a limb here and say that most people didn't want to do that. So what can you do instead? Well, firstly, investigate what connections a potential bank or pension fund has with fossil fuels. Fortunately, some people have already done a lot of the legwork for you. A list of sustainable banks for each country is available at bank.green. I'll leave links to all these in the description, by the way. I was unpleasantly surprised to learn that my bank, Barclays, was one of the worst offenders in the UK. So using this list, I'm investigating moving my current accounts over to the Cooperative Bank or Nationwide. Also, I don't have one at the moment, but I would like to open a private pension. I obviously don't want to invest in fossil fuels, and I'm still looking for the ideal fit here. I haven't found any good resources collating options for this yet. Though one potential option I've stumbled across is the pension operated by Circa 5000, previously Ticker. But let's say you'd like a bigger return, and you're willing to accept a bit more risk, and want to invest in some stocks and shares. Well, that definitely makes it easier to avoid doing harm and allows your money to be more proactive, directly supporting an organization and its actions. The financial return on an investment in a stock or a share can obviously vary wildly, and it's entirely possible that you will lose money doing this. But by picking particular investments, you can be pretty confident that your money will have a positive impact on the climate. A report earlier this year from the Boston Consulting Group investigated which investments yielded the greatest reductions in carbon emissions, and found that by far the best investment was in alternatives to meat and dairy products. For each dollar, investment in improving and scaling up the production of meat and dairy alternatives resulted in three times more greenhouse gas reductions compared with investment in green cement technology, seven times more than green buildings, and 11 times more than zero emission cars. And there's still huge potential for investment in this sector. The report noted that alternative proteins, sorry, I mean, I, I'm vegan and even I think that sounds grim, have received a fraction of the investment ploughed into other sectors like low carbon construction. I'm not going to recommend specific shares or companies because I think that would be irresponsible, but taking cues from this report, it's pretty clear that investing in specific sectors can bring down carbon emissions and maybe earn you some money. Personally, I'm not planning on investing in stocks or shares because I'm quite risk averse and frankly, I don't know what I'm doing. So as with the rest of this video, if you plan on investing in this way, please do your own research first or speak to a financial professional. Something that was much more appealing to me was the returns of shares without having to pick them myself. So funds, mutual funds and ETFs looked very appealing. Generally speaking, in picking a fund, the term we're looking for is ESG ethical, social, and governance investing. There are plenty of ESG funds out there. By one estimate, a third of all funds are managed according to ESG guidelines, but it's not as simple as just picking a fund with the label ESG, because the other term we're looking for here is greenwashing. 
Greenwashing is of course the practice of making a thing appear more environmentally friendly, or less environmentally damaging, than it really is, for PR purposes. A classic example is luxury water brands like Fiji claiming to be environmentally friendly while still producing mountains of single-use plastics, and transporting water thousands of miles from Fiji when a uh, you don't need to do that. While many funds have the label ESG, quite how environmentally friendly they are varies wildly, something confounded by the fact that there is no consistent methodology for assessing what their climate impact actually is, or even agreeing on what ESG means. In my research, I found that I had to go on individual funds' websites to check what their criteria were for making an investment and what their portfolios were actually comprised of. And that's obviously not ideal for trying to pick a fund. So if you're thinking of investing this way, I have two recommendations. Firstly, greenportfolio.com is an excellent jumping off point for the start of your research. And once you've identified a particular fund, go to iShares.com and look for the sustainability characteristics section. It will give you lots of sort of assessment on quite how environmentally friendly that fund is. But secondly, consider talking to a financial expert that specialises in ESG investing. This is very complicated, and they are the experts. Again, I'm not an expert, but in my personal research, I found some promising looking options that you may want to consider as well. Firstly, here in the UK, and I've actually already mentioned them, Circa 5000 is an app that offers a passively managed stocks and shares ISA that explicitly invests in low carbon businesses, and an actively managed alternative to that, so might even be better, is the app Climate. Climate? Climate. Do note that both of these apps are quite new, and so there's not much data to go on in terms of predicting what kind of return you'll get from them. Investing in any kind of fund is obviously risky, these ones perhaps more so. Secondly, I went through quite a few ETFs and found that quite a few of them just flat out didn't do what they say they did. Like there was a clean energy fund that had just 2% of its portfolio in energy. I'll put some of the more promising ones up on screen, though obviously please do your own research before touching any of these funds. And then lastly, and this was really cool to learn about, robo-investing. You earned that 50 bucks. You gave me a 20. I did. Robo-investing is a specific kind of fund that's exploded over the past couple of years. The way that it works is you put deposits into the fund and it automatically invests that money in a diverse portfolio, with you having control over which assets get investment in, which sectors, and how much risk you want in the portfolio. There are tons of apps that offer this service, and many of those apps offer ESG options. And interestingly, those ESG portfolios have in some cases actually performed better than the core portfolios that they offer. So so you really don't have to sacrifice your returns for your principles here. But unfortunately, digging into the details, I couldn't find an app available in the UK that met both of my criteria. Wealthify's ESG portfolio aims to limit profits from polluting industries, which isn't good enough, while Nutmeg's ESG portfolio explicitly doesn't invest in polluting industries, but also doesn't invest in anything that's actively trying to lower carbon emissions. If you live in the US, however, an OK option seems to be Betterment's Climate Impact Portfolio, though it will only invest a small portion of your money into climate solutions. As far as I could tell, the best option is a robo-advisor called Carbon Collective, which has a really transparent framework entirely based around lowering emissions, and seems to have a pretty good return too. Though, as Game of Thrones adequately demonstrated, past performance is no guarantee of future results. All right, let's talk through three general bits of advice, three top tips for investing, which people like Warren Buffett and all of these like famous people who are actually into investing would say. Number one is that it's generally sensible to have an emergency fund where you have somewhere between three and six months worth of living expenses so that if anything bad were to happen, you've at least got this cash that you're not gonna to touch for any reason other than an emergency. Secondly, if you are gonna invest, it's worth probably investing in stocks and shares, but crucially, you wanna probably avoid individual stock picking. This is a mistake that a lot of people make, and what Warren Buffett says is that if he had basically any amount of money to invest, he would just put it in an ETF, an exchange traded fund, like the S&P 500. This means that you're not subject to the whims and ups and downs of an individual company, but you're diversified across the whole US stock market, if that's what you want to go into. And generally, most people who lose money in the stock market lose money because they are trying to pick individual stocks and one of those stocks goes down to really low and then that's obviously really bad. And then tip number three that I would say is that however much money you have to invest, even if you're only investing five pounds or 10 pounds, it's worth starting sooner rather than later. 
At the very least, it's worth just exploring who are the online stockbrokers in whatever country you're in. Here in the UK, Vanguard and Hargreaves Lansdowne and Charles Stanley Direct are reasonable options. And it's worth just putting five or 10 pounds into the accounts and actually just seeing what it's like to invest your money in an individual stock or in an exchange traded fund. Because what that means is that when you start actually getting serious about investing, maybe further down the line, maybe you get a raise at work and you wanna put more money in, now you know how to do it. You've got the accounts, you've verified your identity, all that stuff, so you don't waste loads of time trying to get all those things set up. And I would know I procrastinated for around three years when I first started making money because I kept on thinking, oh, this investing thing seemed, you know, I should figure it out at some point, but like the timing never was never quite right. And I really wish someone had told me, look man, just like put five pounds in an account even if you don't have much money to invest, at least you know how it works. Based on my research and the recommendations of friends who know better and my risk portfolio, for now, I aim to move my current accounts away from a bank that actively supports fossil fuel extraction, set up a pension, probably with circa 5,000 or an equivalent, I need to do a bit more research here, and then put a little bit of money a month into an ETF or maybe an app like Climate. If Carbon Collective ever comes to the UK, I'm getting in on that. Now, throughout all this discussion, you may have had a question. What about crypto? Well, especially with recent developments, I didn't want to rush through crypto in this video and instead do it as a separate standalone video about whether crypto is or could ever be an eco-friendly investment. And that video is available right now over on Nebula, who have kindly sponsored this video. It's the streaming service owned and operated by a collection of educational YouTubers, including me, where we upload our content early, without any ads, and alongside exclusive extra videos like my videos on crypto, dark matter, and quantum field theory and a huge number of original series funded by our viewers. You see, we love watching videos, but we hate watching ads. So we run Nebula on a subscription model with some of your money directly financing original projects. You can get a subscription at curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark because we are partnered with CuriosityStream. If Nebula is the best of small scale creators like myself and Wendover Productions, then CuriosityStream is the best of big budget documentaries across every subject imaginable with the likes of David Attenborough and Hannah Fry. Out of their thousands of titles, you could watch Inside a Trader's Brain, a documentary about neuroeconomics and how traders' unconscious minds can have disastrous effects on the global economy. Signing up to CuriosityStream and Nebula is possibly the best investment you could ever make in your experience watching educational, entertaining videos online, and one of the best ways you can support me as a creator. So I would highly encourage you to check out curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark. And if you do so, as well as getting access to CuriosityStream and Nebula, you also get access to a 26% discount. So please do check that out. I would really appreciate it, as I appreciate CuriosityStream and Nebula for sponsoring this video. As I said in the beginning, this was a video I made for me. I wanted to learn about this stuff, and I figured that there were probably quite a few of you in my audience who would also like to learn about it. So I hope you took something away. Even if not, I did. Thanks to my friend Ali for appearing in this video. If you're not familiar with him, here's one of his videos. If you'd like something else to watch from me next, here's one of mine. And do check out CuriosityStream and Nebula down there, and you can also subscribe to this channel. That just leaves me to say thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.